Hello everyone, today I will give a presentation on my research which is related to the HVDC circuit breakers and also the current flow controllers. The presentation will be divided into four parts. First, I will give an introduction on the motivation of my research. Nowadays, most of the HVDC systems are still point-to-point -point links, but in the future, there is a trend, a possibility that we can connect the existing point-to-point -point links to form multi-terminal or meshed MTDC networks in order to improve the system's flexibility and the reliability. And also in such a system, so we can integrate many types of different kinds of renewable energies into the multi-terminal HVDC systems. There is also an example which is constructed in China. It is a four-terminal HVDC, a meshed HVDC system, so the voltage rating is 500 kilowatts. But there are still a lot of challenges on the way to building MTDC networks. The first one is a DC fault. Since there is no zero crossings of DC fault currents, so it's more difficult for an uh, interrupted DC fault current. And also another reason is that the, the DC fault current increase very fast, which means that uh, the protection system needs to isolate the fault in a very short time. And there is also another challenge is, is that uh, how to we need to regulate the current flow within the meshed MTDC networks uh, because there are a lot of parallel transmission lines, parallel the parts for the current to flow. So if we do not regulate the current flow properly, the overloading of some transmission lines may occur when the system as operating point is changed. So in order to address uh, such uh, challenges, uh, DC breakers and uh, also the CFC controllers have been proposed and uh, discussed uh, you know, by, by the range, but uh, there are among all the available schemes, there has a, still have a problem in that the DC circuit breakers and also the CFC controllers consume a lot of IDBTs, which means it will increase the system level's cost. There is an example on the right in the figure, which is only one hybrid circuit breaker, which is built for the Zhangbei project. The DC breaker is quite a large uh, device. It, it is, uh, consists of a lot of IGBTs. So the cost and the, the reliability are still challenging for building such big device. But there is uh, also uh, there are also three uh, circuit breakers and the one CFC controllers needed in one terminal. When we integrated the device into one, we can save a lot of devices. Then in my research, I proposed a device which aims to reduce the number of the electronic devices that will be used in circuit breaker and the CFC controllers. The topology is shown in the left, which uh, integrated the two circuit breakers and the one CFC controllers into one devices. And the system, the system levels configurations are shown in the right. In this way, we can integrate the uh, two circuit breakers and the, uh, the CFC controllers into one devices. And the DC fault isolations of the proposed device, there are normally four, four steps in order to isolate a DC fault. The first one is the normal operating conditions. And the current can flow through both the positive and the negative buses. There's a fault is detected. The mechanical switch and the power electronic switch will be switched off in order to redirect the, the fault current into the main breaker. After that, the main breaker can be switched off to isolate the DC fault. So the DC fault current will be reduced quickly uh, by the MOVs. And then after the DC current is interrupted, so we can isolate the fault line by switching off these two devices. Uh, after that, uh, the system can be restored and the fault is isolated. The fault line is isolated. Functionality of the current flow control. The device can be created as a current flow controllers. We switch on all the mechanical switch and switch off the main breakers. And then the 
the proposed device can be simplified as shown in the right. So it's a half bridge based CFC controller. And uh, for such a controller, we have four operating modes. The, for the bypass mode, we, all the switches is switched on. So we do not, the, the CFC controller will have no influence on the current flows in the systems. In the current landing mode, we insert the capacitor into one of the transmission lines. So the current will be just the flow one of the transmission lines, but the other is zero. Under the condition of the current sharing mode, we apply the PWMs to one of the bridges connected to the terminal. In this way, we can make the current to be shared between distributed between the two transmission lines and the, the current is regulated by the duty cycle of the PWM signals. And for the other current reversal mode, we applied, applied the PWM to one of the bridges connected to the transmission lines. In this, in this way, we can uh, got this equation, the output current is uh, equal to the input current divided by the duty cycle. So in this way, uh, we can see that the output current is bigger, is larger than the input current. So the, the current of other transmission lines will be reversed. So in th this way, we can reverse the, the current in one of the transmission lines. So the name is called the current reverse mode. And based on the characteristics of the different uh, operating modes, uh, level shift modulation has been proposed. So the carriers has been level shifted. In order that, in, in one of the specific operating mode, only one of the bridges is operating, is uh, regulated by the PWM signals. And the simulation results, the three terminal systems has been built in PSCAD and the parameters are shown in the table. It's a 500 kilowatts system. And in order to verify the DC fault function, function of the DC fault isolations, artificial faults has been created in, in both the transmission lines and at the terminals. And from the simulation results, we can see that most of the, most of the faults can be interrupted by the proposed device in a very short time. And uh, this uh, slide shows the simulation results for the current flow control. Under the, this simulation conditions, the operating points is artificially changed in the simulation. At the initial stage, the current flow controller is disabled. So we can see that there are some uh, unbalanced current flows between transmission lines and one of the transmission lines is just beyond the current limits of 1.5 kilo ohm at uh, t equals to 5 seconds and we enable the current, current flow controllers so we can see that the unbalanced uh, current flows between transmission lines can be balanced and similarly in, in another case, another scenarios, we still see the similar results the two scenarios each of them is in the current sharing mode and the other is in the, under the current reversal mode. So it's verified analysis. Under the advantages, we do a comparisons between different schemes. The third one is the, the scheme we proposed and the, the, the first one and the second one is the schemes proposed by other researchers. And based on the results, you can see that for the third one, only 800 uh, IGBTs are used compared to other the other two. We can save a lot of IGBTs, which means we can save a lot of uh, cost. But it should be noticed that uh, for the third scheme, we use more mechanical switch. Because, but since the the cost of the mechanical switch is uh, normally uh, lo much lower than the IGBT devices, so the proposed scheme is cost-effective compared to the other solutions. In conclusion, so in this uh, presentation, uh, the DC protection and the current flow capabilities of the proposed device has been uh, shown and it has been verified by the simulation results. The most uh, advantages of the proposed device is, uh, is the redu reduction of the, the IDBT devices. So if you are interested in, in the details of the, you can find the detailed discussion on the publications.